live from the studios of the Ram Cave in the home of the Camellias. I'm Joe Tarosian, and this is the Burbank Faith Virtual Good Morning for May the 22nd, 2023. As always, we are praying for our young people, even as the school year winds down. We are still praying for our young people. Today, it's a simple verse. It's Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. We read Hebrews uh, 11, 1. <coughs> We're going to read verse 3 today. This is the 70th episode of A Ministry Without Parole, and uh, and so thank you so much for clicking on, and uh, we're going to get dive right in here. We're going to read the scripture, do a brief devotional, and let you guys move on with your day and share a few prayer requests and give a couple of updates as they come in. Okay, uh, Hebrews, this is, the, this is the faith chapter, chapter 11, uh, and, uh, and here we are at verse 3. Now, again... Again, I know people are going to say, well, you didn't go deep enough, Joe. Well, this is just a devotional. It's a little morning rah-rah. Uh, everything that the Bible is, there's there's stuff that you could tick, pick off right off the top layer, and you can keep digging deep, and you can find more and more gold. But that goes from a devotional into Bible study, which all are good, but here we're not necessarily doing Bible study. Maybe a little more Bible introduction. And some, uh, just some rah-rah to get your day started. All right. Hebrews chapter 11, picking it up at verse 3. The McCoys from Reno. Uh, I'm going to have to start uh, making you guys uh, say this this version of the, this episode of the, of the Burbank Faith Good Morning is brought to you by the McCoys in Reno. Thank you so much for your faithfulness. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. <clears throat> by faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. So that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, we understand that the universe formed at God's command. So that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Hebrews 3. Okay, application here, real quick. We will never move past the realm of faith, okay? Faith will always be required in our walk, okay? Okay. Uh, in our dealings with the world, we will always uh, we will always be locked in on faith. We're not going to move beyond it. Okay, um, maybe when our physical body dies and we stand in the Lord's presence and we see Him right before us, okay, then maybe that's the tangible reality we're going to deal with, and and the, the faith aspect will will be diminished. But for our purposes in this life where we're living now, we will never move past the realm of faith. We will never be able to present documented, notarized, peer-reviewed evidence to the world to convince them that there is a God and that he created all things. Stop getting hung up on that. I don't think there's anything wrong with the archaeology and, and all the new evidence that, that that's out there nowadays. And, and we know, we know this is happening uh, more and more because you can't squash it. It keeps coming out. More and more evidence is pointing to a creator. And, uh, the, the old theories are are fading, right? Almost fading and as crumbling as uh, Judaism was in about 65 AD. It's starting to fade. and uh, But there will always be those who hang on, right? Like the federal government, right? So, and even if we did present documented, notarized, peer-reviewed evidence, even if we did, my faith convinces me that we, we do have that evidence already, but that's okay. Not everyone shares my faith. It will still be rejected by the world, meaning the world will still reject us no matter what we believe, say, or how justly we live. It just doesn't want to live in that space where if I have to acknowledge a creator of all things, then I have to acknowledge that there's someone I'm answerable to. And it's our job to convince them, to show them that this life matters and that it means something. Unfortunately, the church does a very poor job of doing that, the church in general. To have that broad of an expectation that everyone's going to say, ah, here's the evidence, right? And then in this space of time that we occupy, to think that everyone's going to go, ah, oh, well, they, 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 it's notarized, right? To expect them to just say, okay, yeah, I believe now. It's unrealistic, okay? For me personally, the existence of God has never been an issue. Long before church, long before my first comprehensive Bible reading experience, maybe the way I'm built, um, I don't know. But to be perfectly honest, this isn't always good. 
uh, as people throughout my life have tried to convince me that there is no God. Now, this comes as a teenage lay person, as a lay person in adulthood or my early years to a ministry and ordained elder and all that kind of stuff. At all these stages of my life, when people have tried to convince me there is no God, and all along the scale of atheism to agnosticism and all the evolutionary processes, and they're trying to convince me of all these things or to grab onto one of those things, I've always inwardly had a sense of superiority and almost a brief little giggle to me uh, in those situations. It's often out of pity that the person uh, making this argument to me, I just look at them and I go, they just don't get it. You know, my mom used to say when she'd see a kid doing things that were just really dumb, playing with matches or doing something that was going to hurt him, I'd say, mom, look what he's doing. And my mom would say, honey, he just doesn't get it. Right. And I'd have the smartest people, much smarter than me, trying to convince me that something came from nothing. And, and they were feeling sorry for me, but they didn't know inwardly I was actually feeling sorry for them. And in some cases, when they were really bold and arrogant and demeaning, I was kind of laughing at them. Is that the best way to win somebody into the kingdom? No. Uh, do I do that anymore? Absolutely not. But uh, but it was it was stuff that happened in my life when someone would say, you don't understand, you're stupid for going to church, and you, I can't believe you believe in God, and yada, yada, yada. And I'm going, oh my gosh, these are the people that believe something came from nothing. And they're telling me. Uh, as someone who grew up watching 1 million years BC for the dinosaurs and not Raquel Welch, in high school, you watched it for Raquel Welch. When you're 8, 9, 10, uh, you're just happy 1 million years BC is on. Your older brothers might be checking out Raquel Welch. Uh, and like I said, in high school, I checked out Raquel Welch. But I believe it or not, most of the kids my age, when we were 6, 7, 8 years old, were watching 1 million years BC for the dinosaurs. And I was really into that prehistoric stuff. But maybe just the way I'm built, I remember everything. Uh, first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, when we got to little sections about dinosaurs and everything, uh, all of a sudden, all the dates started being shifted. History guy, right? 1776, you know, Washington served 1789 to 1797, Adams 1897 to 19, 1801, uh, Jefferson 1801 to 1809, Madison 1809 to 1817. Air of Good Feeling, 1817 to 1825, James Monroe. This is stuff that's ingrained in me. And what I started noticing was uh, the remedy to every hard question when it came to dinosaurs and Jurassic periods and these kind of periods was just add a few more million years and some water and we'll make it work, right? We'll make it work, right? And and there was always these constant perpetual adjustments and they said, well, science is ever changing until science is ever changing until it points the direction to God and then we have to veer it in another direction. Let's just add a few more million years. I'll just share this creation stuff requires faith on both sides, but only one side is willing to admit it. And it requires faith. Hebrew says it requires faith. By faith we understand that the uniform, the universe was formed at God's command. And that what is seen was not made out of what was visible, right? I'm not perfect. Um, I have issues. Uh, and of course, I have questions I want the Lord to answer. But this chapter in Hebrews 11 is about faith. I identify with it. Through the hardest times when we don't have a clue as to what God is doing, we don't understand why we just can't see a full jar of flour and a full jug of oil. We don't understand that we have to see it <coughs> almost empty and, and then continue to go there by faith, right? I understand that. Uh, I understand what it's like. Why, why are you doing this to my child? I understand. Were well, you putting my family through this? I understand all those things. I'm not perfect. But in all those situations, I might not be happy, but my faith will not be shaken by the voice of any man or woman. They will not be um, I will never surrender to, why are you holding on to your integrity? Just curse God and die. I will never do that. Uh, and I'm not unique in that regard. This is what we want our young people to know. We want them to be able to grind on in their faith through all adversity and to never be shaken in their faith. Oh, it's going to take a hit. It's going to take a hit. But uh, this is why pastors and teachers need to be more diligent in their prep and in their sharing with our young people and not just advancing received knowledge because it was passed down to them by someone they know. Um, just to say, 
trust me is not good enough when they're going to a college campus and the whole effort there is deconstruction and after deconstruction there's no reconstruction um there may be uh um there may never be enough evidence to prove absolutely prove god but there's already enough evidence to prove the atheists and the evolutionists who claim that something came from nothing are wrong we win that battle we but we don't need to we don't need to worry about declaring it. We already know it, okay? So we don't allow our faith to be rattled. We understand the argument of something coming from nothing cannot defeat who Christ is and the work of the cross. Uh, this is what we want our young people to experience, to know and trust in, that there might be a time when they're there. And it's not a God's not dead moment where they have the snappy answer to the, to the professor's hostile question or proposal. And they might be overwhelmed because we also know that when that environment, the, the, the herd is going to go along with the teacher and they might feel isolated. And what we want them to have is this ability to trust in what they've been taught, what they've learned and the faith they've invested in. And this is the confidence we want them to have when they come face to face with the spiritual hostility of this world. And that's why we pray for our young people every day, that, that a wave and a spirit of discernment will come upon them and it'll expose the fraudulence of this world and the fraudulence the church has dabbled in in this time. Mike Picard, how have you been? Thank you so much. I got Reno. I got Idaho. What a great morning. I am rocking it in the Northwest. Okay, folks, we're, we, we want to pray for our young people. As a quick reminder, June, how, is, how does this match up? June is Discernment Awareness Month. It's a call to pray, test, and recognize that all we see in the culture, media, entertainment, and politics may not be to our benefit or to the benefit of our children or our children's children. And uh, we know June is going to be a special month, right? Full of all kinds of happiness and rainbows and flowers, right? Uh, be discerning. Be discerning and uh, ask questions that if everyone's in agreement, why is everyone in agreement? And why do I need to go along with it just because everyone else agrees? Okay, so let's be in prayer. Uh, <clears throat> we are happy the McCoys are with us. So we prayed for them all last week and we will continue uh, on our own to pray for them. But if they have an issue come up, you guys, Kelly and them, you let us know. Mike Picard, you let us know if you have a prayer request. Um, <clears throat> we wanna continue to pray for the Garmin's. Uh, Piper Morrison, her son Grayson, who is in Idaho battling crabs, uh, crab uh, leukodystrophy, leukodystrophy. Uh, Megan Meeks, Jimmy Maldonado, his brother Ronnie, uh, Darlene Carroll, her friend Kathy Duncan, uh, Ralph battling COPD. Uh, we want to pray for our people battling cancer. Tim Burns, Tammy Monk Voschel, Bill Trollinger, Rachel Gilbert, Colby Van Dyke and Emmanuel, who are all battling cancer. We want to add to that list an 87-year-old retired Marine woman named Jan, who's having some health issues. Her prayer came to us in church yesterday. We want to add Victor Storms, who's having some eye issues. Victor battles diabetes, and he's having some eye issues. That request came to him, came to us by his son, uh, Ryan. And we want to remember Roxy Clark and Rick Lippett. Both of them are, are having some health issues as well as Bill Alajaji, who's having some health issues, and we want to pray for all of them today, uh, as well as Vision Paradise, our Spanish church congregation, and our future Armenian ministry. All the ministries we're involved in, including Bible study on Wednesdays and, uh, and, and uh, everything else to do Sunday morning. Uh, continue to pray that we're good stewards. Uh, financially, we've been blessed enough to meet all of our obligations, uh, although... Uh, new projects as they come up with a building that's 95 years old uh, does put a stress on us. So if you could keep us in prayer financially, that would be wonderful as well. Uh, as well as Granite Ridge, our, uh, our campground up in uh, Creston, uh, that is home camp for us. And we are getting ready for CIT Academy and, uh, and all the other uh, camps that we're getting ready to run. There's a, in the Comment box, you'll see it says signupgenius.com. It says Outsiders Camps 360 Prayer Coverage. We have broken down all 90 hours of camp into 360 prayer slots, 15 minute prayer slots. And we are asking if you could help fill those prayer slots to make sure that every second of every minute of every hour of every day 
that we are at Kids Camp, July 17th through the 21st, that um, you be covered in prayer. We've had every every hour covered of prayer of Kids Camp since 2018, and we're just asking you to join us this time. Uh, and uh, we really, really would appreciate it uh, if you could uh, take a couple slots and uh, participate with us that way. Okay, let's pray, and I will get you out of here. Lord, we do thank you again for loving us, Lord, and we do pray for discernment for our young people, Lord, the ability to see the fraudulence of this world, the ability to, to see the truth that is found in you. Lord, we pray for, for, for your work in the spiritual realms, Lord, that you would defeat the evil that influences this world and gives voice to those who uh, operate in spiritual hostility towards believers, Lord. Uh, Lord, we pray for those voices to be diminished. We pray for those voices to be taken away. We pray for those voices uh, to come to the light, Lord, and see the truth that is found in you and, and the fraudulence of this world. Lord, so we pray for our young people today, Lord. Bless them, encourage them, not only now, but as they get ready for summer. Lord, um, we ask for, for those that are struggling, those that are hurting, Lord. We continue to pray for our friends, the Garmins. Uh, we pray for our new additions to our prayer list, Lord. Jan, the, the Marine Lady, Lord, we ask for her health, Lord. We ask for Victor Storms. We ask for Rick and Roxy. We pray for them, Lord. And we ask for our, our, our friend, Bill Alajaji, uh, who's the closest thing to a staff member that we can call, Lord, the work he does for our church and texting people and keeping on top with people. We pray for his health today. Lord, we also pray for Piper Morris and her son, Grayson, Lord. We pray for Megan Meeks, Lord. We pray for Jimmy and Ronnie Maldonado, Darlene Carroll, Kathy Duncan. We pray for Ralph battling COPD. We pray for those battling cancer and the treatment of cancer. Tim Burns, Tammy, uh, Bill Trollinger, Rachel Gilbert, Colby Van Dyke, and Emmanuel. Lord, we ask for Vision Paradise <clears throat> and uh, the ministry they do. Uh, Pastor Walter, Pastor Francis, and Edgar. <coughs> Lord, we also pray for uh, a future Armenian ministry, Lord, as well as all of our ministries currently going on at Burbank Faith. Lord, help us to be good stewards of our time, of uh, each other, the, 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 the sacred space that you give us to manage, Lord. Help us to have it ready, uh, whether you come in five years or whether you come in 500 years, Lord. We pray for your truth to be preached and taught on this corner at 505 South 6th Street. We pray for Home Camp Granite Ridge and all the work and all the stuff coming its way this summer. We pray for health and wisdom from our CEO, Gary, his wife, Jan, down to on-site director, Shay Stewart, to, to, uh, to, to Tracy, to Zach, and all those who help run this facility. Lord, uh, we just, again, thank you for being faithful to us. Find us faithful in everything we do. Bless us this day in Jesus' name, amen. Okay. All right. That's it. God bless. Take care. Uh, as I shared earlier, if you can leave a like, leave a comment, uh, three word comments, uh, hit that share button. Uh, these are the things that keep us in the algorithm. And then we will download this <coughs> and share it to our website, Burbank Faith Virtual, as well as our YouTube channel, Burbank Faith Virtual. And of course, we'll plug it in on Twitter and Instagram and all those things. Okay. God bless in the great Northwest. I think Reno counts as the great Northwest. God bless. Take care. And uh, we will talk to you soon.